This is the 15mm box set of M163 VADs and M901 ITV Platoon by Battlefront for Team Yankee. Both vehicles are based on the M113 armoured personnel carrier chassis, with the M163 being an air defence weapon and the M901 a specialist anti-tank missile launcher. The box set contains four plastic vehicles which can be built either as the M901 or M163 configuration. If we look at the back of the box we see the exploded assembly diagram as well as pictures of the completed vehicles. The diagram has a common section for the hull and two specialist sections for building either the M163 or M901 upper hull and turrets. The box contents lists four plastic M113s, four M163 M901 upgrade kits, a decal sheet and unit cards. The box says three cards but you only get two. You also get a resin sprue of four crew figures not listed here. Let's open up the box and look at the plastic. Each vehicle comes on three sprues of medium grey plastic. The first sprue has most of the hull components including the lower hull, one piece tracks, the hull front and two upper hulls, one for the standard M113 and one with a large circular opening for the M106 mortar carrier. Detail is good and sharp with well defined engine deck detail. Track detail is also good. The second sprue is the weapon sprue. This is one of the standard M113 sprues and is a cornucopia for the spares box. It has common M113 vehicle parts like the driver's hatch, rear ramp and door and crew hatch. However it also has a ton of weapons including a 106mm recoilless rifle, mortars, an M134 7.62mm minigun as well as the M250 calibre machine gun and M60s to make the Vietnam era M113 ACAV cavalry version. It even has a flamethrower turret. Unfortunately the Mark 19 40mm grenade launchers on all my sprues were broken. This is probably a side effect of having to cram so many sprues into a standard size box, so watch out for this. All the other weapons were okay although some sprue gates are pretty heavy, making delicate parts hard to cut from the frame. The last sprue here is the M163 M901 upgrade sprue. This has all the extra parts you need to turn the standard M113 kit into either of these specialist variants. The M163 has a custom hull top here. The M901 uses the standard M113 hull top. The M163 also needs the side flotation tanks on this sprue. So that's all the parts. This is just an inbox review, not a build review. Battlefront have assembly guides and videos on their website to assist you here. Check these out if you need some help putting these together. Let's look at the end product. Here's an assembled M163 and an M901. I made a small construction error here. The side flotation parts on the M163 should be mounted a bit lower down. There are no guides here and this is guesswork. I guessed wrong, as I saw when I examined research images later. However, construction blunders aside, these are both nice little kits. The multi-part hull design means you need to take time during assembly to get a tight fit, but a bit of care and dry fitting here does the trick. Detail is nice and crisp, and both vehicles look the part. That's all you can really ask of a wargaming miniature. The M163 Vulcan Air Defence System, or VADS, entered service in 1968. Its main armament was a 20mm 6-barrel M61 Vulcan rotary cannon, which can fire up to 3,000 rounds per minute. This vehicle was designed to be the gun component of a gun missile air defence strategy working alongside the M48 Chaparral, a modified M113 chassis mounting a variant of the Sidewinder infrared missile. The M163 can also engage ground targets with devastating effect. This specialist AA vehicle is the US equivalent of the Soviet ZSU-23-4 Shilka. The M163 only has a ranging radar, not a search radar like the Shilka, and the M163 gunner is exposed to incoming fire and shell fragments. However, the Vulcan cannon has a higher muzzle velocity, meaning a flatter trajectory and a shorter bullet flight time. M163 was meant to be replaced by the ill-fated M247 Sergeant York Divisional Air Defence System. The cancellation of the Sergeant York in 1985 meant the VADs had to soldier on. It was eventually replaced by the Avenger missile system mounted on a modified Humvee and the M6 Linebacker, a gun missile system using Stinger missiles based on the M2 Bradley chassis. The M901 ITV, also known as the Hammerhead, was a specialist anti-tank vehicle. It mounted an Emerson turret fitted with a dual launcher for the tow anti-tank guided missile. 
The launcher was mounted high on the vehicle, meaning it could hide, exposing only the launcher to fire. The launcher could be tilted to allow it to be reloaded from cover through the normal crew hatch on the vehicle. The normal complement was two missiles in the launcher and ten more stowed in racks inside the vehicle. The BGM-71 TOW is a wire-guided anti-tank missile that can be fired from ground mounts, vehicles and helicopters out to a range of 4,000 metres. The US Army started adapting ground mounts onto the M113 in the late 1970s, before developing and fielding the dual launcher ITV version in 1979. Here you can see both versions together on exercise. So how do these vehicles work in Team Yankee? Let's look at the stats. Starting with air defence, this is the stats card for the VADs. It's a tank unit and it's amphibious, which means it treats impassable water as difficult terrain. Courage, morale and remount are all 4+. Plus. Skill is also 4+, plus, but assault and counter-attack are both 5+. Plus. These aren't assault elements and the stats reflect this. The M163 is hit on a 4+, plus and has a front armour 3, side armour 2 and top armour 0. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres. It crosses on a 3 plus. The M168 20mm Vulcan cannon has a relatively limited range at 20 inches or 50 centimetres, but a halted rate of fire of 7 and moving of 4 means it puts out a lot of fire. Its anti tank is 6 and it has a firepower of 5 plus. The special rules are dedicated AA and radar. Dedicated AA means the VADS uses its full rate of fire when engaging aircraft, so lots of chances to get a hit here. Radar means there's no range penalty when firing over 16 inches or 40 centimetres, and the card also gives the weapon system a range of 32 inches or 80 centimetres when shooting at aircraft. A two-vehicle platoon is three points, and six points will get you four, so these are pretty cost-effective inclusion for a US force. If you're looking for cheap anti-tank, then the hammerhead might work. The M901 ITV is a tank unit and also amphibious. It also has the hammerhead and thermal imaging rules. Hammerhead means the team can remain gone to ground while shooting improved tow missiles. Thermal imaging allows the player to roll two dice for night visibility and choose the highest score. There's also no to hit penalties for night and smoke. As with the VADs, the M901 has courage, morale, remount and skill of 4+, with 5-plus for assault and counter-attack. This specialist anti-tank weapon is just not designed for close-in fighting. The M901 is hit on a 4 plus and has a front armour 3, side armour 2 and top armour 1. This top armour rating is better than VADS because the turret allows missiles to be both fired and reloaded under armour. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres and cross is 3 plus. The weapon stats for the improved tow missile has a whopping range of 48 inches or 120 centimetres, but a minimum range of 8 inches or 20 centimetres. The rate of fire is 1 when halted, and the ITV can't fire on the move. This all means the M901 is best used from ambush at long range. When it does hit, the tow missile has an anti-tank of 21 and a firepower of 3+, plus, so it's a heavy hitter. The guided rule here means there's no to hit penalty for ranges over 16 inches or 40 centimetres. Additionally, this weapon can't hit infantry unless they're stationary in bulletproof cover. The missile has an explosive heat warhead, so the target's armour rating isn't increased when engagement range is over 16 inches. However, heat warheads are affected by BDD, Cobham and ERA armour. The M901 has an M60 machine gun for self-defence mounted on the coupler of the missile turret. At three points for a two-vehicle ITV platoon, the M901 gives some good long-range anti-armour punch. Given the range rules and the ability to maintain gone to ground while firing missiles, these are perfect for concealed ambushes at long range to whittle down an opponent's armour. Find these somewhere under cover with a long, unobstructed field of fire to use these to best effect. So that's the M163 M901 platoon box set. These build up into very nice kits. The multi-part hulls need a bit of care, and some heavy sprue gates mean it's hard to get at some delicate parts and there's some cleanup required. The number of sprues means the box is jam-packed, and this caused some parts damage in my box. However, the number of extra parts to build any M113 variant from this box and the boon to my spares box makes these great value. The kits are also nice cheap anti-air or anti-tank assets for US forces, so a valuable addition to the Team Yankee range. I have a nasty feeling I'm going to need another box of these. Just a quick note, the M981 fist track for artillery observers looks almost identical to the M901 hammerhead. 
Observers used the thermal imaging site in the turret to call an observed fall of shot under armour. It would have been nice to get the card for this in the box set.